Korea Advance Institute of Science and Technology, commonly referred to as KAIST, has launched the Fall 2024 Regular Admission for International Graduate Admission. This is the application guide with the possibility for you to obtain a scholarship to study at KAIST Korea. KAIST Scholarship, as it is written here, they say KAIST provide a comprehensive scholarship package including a full tuition fee grant for four semesters master 10 semesters master of science phd that is integrated and eight semester for phd basically if you want to do a master of science it will be for four semesters that is equal to two years and then 10 semester if you plan to do an integrated master of science and then transition to a phd and then an eight semester for those who would want to enroll to do a phd at kais korea the scholarship also offers a monthly stipend to support international students. The exact amount depending on factors like department, advisor and research involvement. Like I've said in other videos, the amount depends on a lot of factors. For example, if you are a research student and have to always go out for conferences to present in conferences, if you're always writing articles, that means you're very much engaged in lab activities and carrying out experiments and then doing publications to publish in international journals, you receive more money. And then additionally, it says premium for national health insurance is covered. The rate and coverage may vary by your participation in research projects and performance, like I said recently and then there are other opportunities for example if you are a research assistant or teaching assistant or have other part-time roles in the university you will earn more money this scholarship gives you the opportunity to earn some money while studying additionally there is one more thing that usually stops a lot of students from applying to KAIST the application fee but here this time around they say application fee waiver program the KAIST application waiver program is designed to enable exceptional individuals from one of the least developed countries that is the oecd dark list of member countries to pursue their academic dreams at kaist this unique program is tailored for applicants seeking admission to our graduate programs ensuring that financial constraints do not stand in the way of deserving students like i said most of the times it's difficult for some students to afford the 80 dollars application fee that they are supposed to pay before their application for scholarship or admission will be processed but this time around in case you are having an issue with paying that application fee there are some conditions that if you are able to fulfill then you can get that application fee waived down here they have said who is eligible to request an application fee waiver applicants for KAIST international graduate admission applicants should be a national of the country see the list below and have live there since their birth applicants with an exceptional academic standing within their department or field of study ranking in the top five or higher of their bs or ms classes if you are the top five during your graduation for your bs and you want to do a master of science at kais korea make sure you should be among the top five and also if you are applying for a master combined phd make sure you are the top five in your class if you are applying for a phd make sure that during your graduation from your master of science degree you were among the top five as well then you will be eligible for this waiver fee and then the last condition is that you must provide one letter of recommendation from your department head from either your bs time or your ms time so if you are applying for a master's degree get a letter of recommendation from your head of department when you are doing your bachelor of science if you are applying for either an integrated master or phd get a letter of recommendation from your head of department when you are doing your bachelor's of science degree and if you are applying for a phd get a letter of recommendation from your head of department when you are doing your master of science or bachelor of science either way make sure you get a letter of recommendation from your head of department in that situation you will be waived so these are the three conditions that you must make sure you fulfill in order to apply for an application fee waiver and there is a deadline that you must make sure you apply for the application fee it says from the 12th of february to the 19th of february by 6 pm as it is indicated here and you would have to fill out the google form it says eligible applicants must submit the application fee waiver request form through the google form and this is the link 
and submit a letter of recommendation from the department head via email to feewaiver at kais.ac.kr with application fee waiver for 2024 for regular track in the subject title so your recommender is supposed to email your recommendation letter to this email address and the title of that email must be application fee waiver request for 2024 for regular track in the subject headline if you go down this is the application fee waiver form that you would have to fill up so it's very important that you fill up this application fee waiver sign and then write down the date and then the letter of recommendation this is a letter of recommendation for application fee waiver that your head of department is supposed to sign and they are supposed to indicate that you are either among the top one to two percent or top one to five percent they must indicate that information they will fill up their information here up here is the applicant's information so they have to fill up this information there is also the list of honors and awards form down here that you would have to fill up this is for the students to fill out before we continue it is important for me to indicate that kais has two campuses one is at dayjon and the other one is in seoul and also if you've not yet subscribed to the channel make sure you subscribe subscribe and then follow me on facebook and instagram because i post scholarship opportunities in south korea and other parts of the world on my facebook and instagram every day i repeat i do post scholarship opportunities every day on my facebook and instagram so if you really want to study outside if you don't want to miss out on those opportunities go ahead and click the link tree that is down in the description section of this video and follow me on facebook and instagram there are lots of opportunities that i do post on my facebook and instagram that i don't usually make videos on because that will take me a lot of time i just post them on my facebook and instagram follow me if you don't want to miss out on those opportunities now for the list of countries that are eligible for the kai scholarship just go and type dark list on google 2023 and then it will take you to this page where you would find that list of oda recipients and then if you go here you would find here that list of oda recipients for reporting on 8 2022 and 2023 if you click on the pdf option it will come out with the list of countries so these are the list of that list of oda recipients who can apply for the kai scholarship that is the korea advanced institute of science and technology in south korea so if you know you want to apply to do either a graduate master of science at korea advanced institute of science and technology then you should make sure your country is on this list of countries if you are applying for a phd to study at korea advanced institute of science and technology go through this dark list and make sure your country futures on this list let's continue with the timeline for application for this scholarship to study at korea advanced institute of science and technology Christ. here is the timeline for application online application will begin on the 4th of march and will end on the 25th of march it is supposed to be done online and you must make sure you apply online before 5 p.m on the 25th of march south korean time and then next thing is you would have to make sure you submit your documents before the 3rd of april runs out and then any missing documents will be submitted also before the 3rd of april so in case you apply online and there are any extra documents that the university might request you must make sure it gets to them by the 3rd of april and then after that they would review your application documents and then if you succeed in the review process of documents that is document screening they will do interview interviews will begin from the 2nd of may right up to the 29th of May. they will inform the different students who will succeed in the application process on when their interview will take place and then from there scholarship review they would review if you're eligible for scholarship from the 18th of june to the 20th of june it is important for me to indicate here that the online process i have a video on my youtube channel the video will be on the top right hand of your screen on how to apply online i think that video is for undergraduate but the application process is the same for undergraduate students who want to get into kais as well as for graduate students who want to get into skies it is important to indicate that during the application process you must indicate you must select kai scholarship if you do not select kai scholarship you will pay tuition fee so make sure that during the application 
process you select high scholarship which is why you should watch that video when applying online and then there is the application checklist that you must provide in the list of documents for application so there is the document checklist there's the online application print out that you have to print out and submit physically with the other documents you must post them to south korea then letters of recommendation you must send the letters of recommendation electronically so during the online application process you will provide the email of your referees the people who are going to recommend you make sure you get their emails their full information like their names phone numbers and then the position that they hold in the society you would fill out all of that information online and then your different certificates and degrees or diploma you have to upload them online and then transcripts also you have to upload them online it's important english proficiency you have to provide an english proficiency but it is important to note that they say ept this is english proficiency test score in case you have IELTS or TOEFL then you would have to select this one if you have any English lecture certificate you'll provide if you had your degree from a country where English is spoken then you have to provide a document to prove that in this country English is not the official language but English is used as a medium of instruction in that university and then if you are a citizen of an English speaking country then you will select this one so for example in a country like Nigeria though it is an English speaking country officially in the world they don't consider it as an English speaking countries but all of the universities do teach in English in that case you would select this and then you provide an English proficiency certificate from your university indicating that you are from an english speaking country but as we proceed you would find out that some countries are considered as english speaking countries by kais so you provide a curriculum vitae identity document to prove that you're not a korean citizen so there are some documents down here like from 9 right up to 10 you don't really need to provide it but from 10 to 13 you would have to provide it if you want it is optional for letters of recommendation know that you would have to provide two letters of recommendation english language proficiency for those who are not from an english speaking country know that you would have to provide either TOEFL, IELTS, TOEIC or TEPS and then if you're from one of these english speaking countries that have been named here you will be exempted from providing an english proficiency test you do not need to provide an english proficiency test score if you hold citizen of the following countries and have completed a qualification equivalent to a bachelor's degree or higher in english as the medium of instruction from an institution physically located in the following country so if you come from either botswana cameroon there is nigeria and a host of other countries if you had a degree from one of these countries all you need to do is provide an english proficiency test document from that country university indicating that english was the medium of instruction without which you would have to provide an english proficiency test one of these english proficiency Test. and then for those who are applying for a master or phd it is important to note that you might be asked to provide at least three names of faculty members in the department you will be applying whose research interest aligns with your own area of research but in most cases it is also important to note that you do not really need to contact them simply go to the department that you want to apply to go through the professor's profile look at their research interest if they are in an area of research that you might be interested in then write down their name in the application document when you will be applying online and then for those who are applying for a doctoral program it is very important that you contact a professor that is one of the steps for you to get a phd at kais korea that is korea advanced institute of science and technology you must contact a professor and then there are other extra scholarships so there is the kais scholarship that we talked about and then there is the kais global presidential scholarship and that scholarship is going to offer you full tuition fee grant for four semesters or ten semesters for those who will be doing a master of science and then transition to a phd and then for those who are going straight to a phd an eight semester tuition fee will be waived then there is a monthly stipend that is guaranteed and then they would equally provide you with a national health insurance and then for those who are doing a master or phd know that you would receive a minimum of one million korean won per month as your monthly stipend which is enough money you might even be able to save some money while studying in south korea so it's very important that you apply to study at kaist korea 
for the degree programs here are the list of degree programs that are available for application and you actually have the contact information of the different majors you can go ahead and contact them especially for those who are applying for a phd but if you go to the college of for example biological science on this department you would find the different professors who are teaching the different majors you can go ahead on the website and then try to look for their individual emails and email them there is engineering here from mechanical engineering right down to robotics program you have the different emails and phone numbers so do not hesitate to contact them as far as i know korea advanced institute of science and technology is one of the universities that is always accepting students and providing a good financial package for them to study because it is one of the most valued university institute in south korea where if you graduate even they will put you towards the path of getting a permanent resident to stay and work in south korea so this is a really really good opportunity for those who are thinking of living in south korea and making money after graduation from their degree program go ahead and look at this application document that being said i'll end the video here if you know you've not yet subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video bye bye